Hello, this is Mrs. Butcher, and this video goes with section 1-3 in your book. It's about transformations of function graphs. So, here's a generic function, the screen thing. We can transform our functions by going le transforming them left or right or up or down. Um, we can stretch or compress them vertically or horizontally, like that or that. Uh, well, I'm twisting it. I didn't mean to, but we can stretch it or compress it vertically or horizontally. We could reflect it across the x-axis or across the y-axis. There's y-axis. There's x-axis. And so those are the transformations that we're going to be um, focusing on in this lesson. All right, so the general format of a function, we use f of x f of x equals some function. Let's just use that, the absolute value of x as an example. But it could be any function, x squared, or just x, or whatever. Um, but there are four places where we can put numbers that change what this function does. We all know that the absolute value of x is a v. It's just um, a graph like this, right? Whoops, with the vertex at 0, 0. But we could put numbers here, or here, or here or here and I know that writing this out looks very confusing to you. The first one is the A. We could have a number out in front of our function. So A is a number, any number you want, out in front of your function like that. And it can be positive or it could be negative. The next place we could put something is the B. We could put something inside the function like the absolute value of 3x or 2x or 7x and it could be positive or negative. So we could have a number inside the function. We could also be adding or subtracting something inside the function. So we could have the absolute value of x plus 2 or x minus 7 or whatever. But that's what the minus h is in place for. And we could add or subtract a number after the function. And so we would have our absolute value of x and then we would add or subtract some number after it. So the places um, matter whether it's outside or inside, outside or inside. And each of those things will do something different to the graph. So I'm going to start by talking about the translations and that would be the H and the K. When a value K, we're going to start at the very end, when a value K is added after a function, then the function's graph is translated vertically. When a value H is subtracted from X within the function, inside there, the graph is translated horizontally. So after the function goes vertically, inside the function goes horizontally. So here's a vertical example. Um, this is just a generic function f of x. It doesn't have an equation that goes with it, but it's just a zigzag here. But it has a table, um, x values and y values. And if I were to t take this function and make it f of x plus 4, then I'm adding 4 to every y value, right? Because x, f of x is just y, so I'm saying y plus 4. So I would be shifting this function up 4. Every point here would go up 4 units. Here, 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 and here, and it would look like that. The way you can get that um, with the table is just to add 4 to every y value. You would just add 4 to negative 2 and get 2, right? Um, add 4 to each of your vertical values. Or look at this one. If we were to make it f of x, and then minus 3. We would be going down 3, right? So we would go down 3, down 3, down 3, down 3. We would just subtract 3 from every y value. And so here's a table of that. Um, there you can see it. Table of values. Woo! Sorry. So here if I scoot this up, oh look, they've already drawn what the translated graphs would look like. Guess what? We got it right. Yay! Um, the graph shifts up 4 when k is 4. The graph shifts down 3 when k is 3. Okay, so now let's do a horizontal example using the same generic function, the same zigzag. Um, it says let h equal 2. So if it says f of x minus 2, inside the parentheses it says minus 2. It's going to shift 2 units to the right. And it's kind of confusing when you start doing this at first because it says minus 2 and you think, well, negative 2 goes to the left. But because it's minus h in your generic function, um, it's always going, basically it's going the opposite of what the sign says. Um, so 
If I say x minus 2, I'm going 2 units to the right. So all of my x's shift to the right too. And so the whole thing, you can see it, it's pink. The whole thing gets shifted 2 units to the right. And of course, if it was a negative number, if I had f of x minus negative h, like f of x, and I wanted to go to the left, so I wanted to say minus negative 7, so I, or 3, I don't know, whatever. If it says plus, we know it goes to the left. All right, now here comes the harder part, the stretches and compressions. If you multiply by a parameter outside of the function, it will stretch or compress the graph vertically. If I take my y values and multiply them by something, if I multiply my height by 2, then it doubles. If I multiply my height by 1 half, then it compresses. If you multiply by a parameter inside the function, so you're multiplying just the x, not the whole function, so not y, but x, then it will stretch or compress horizontally. So here I've taken the same example that we started with, um, and now I've got 2 f of x. So I'm multiplying on the outside, and I'm multiplying each y value by 2. So if I look in my chart, I've doubled each y value. And so when we plot that, the pink is the graph here. And if you look, it's not shifted up to, it's the, the positives are higher by 2, but the negatives are lower by 2. So the whole thing has become stretched vertically by a factor of 2. Basically, it's twice as tall as it was before. Now we could take the same example, and instead we'll let um, a be 1 half. So if we're multiplying by something that is less than 1, then it, we're going to be compressing it. Just like, um, you know, you think about that. If I multiply something by a number less than 1, the answer will be smaller. Um, so if I took all my y values and I halved them, then each, like, half of 2 is 1 and half of negative 2 is negative 1. The whole graph is now half as tall. So we say compressed vertically by a factor of 1 half. Okay, now let's do a horizontal example. So now we know what A does. Um, now let's look at the, what the B is. The B is the number inside of the parentheses multiplied by x in there. So let's let B be 1 half. If I have f of 1 half x, the technical definition is that each x we choose gets the y value of what half of that x value had in the original function. But that's kind of confusing to think about every time you're trying to do this. So just an easier way of saying this is the graph is stretched horizontally by a factor of 2. It's always going to be stretched if this number is less than 1. Um, and it stretches by the reciprocal of the value, right? So 1 half times x means we're going to stretch it horizontally by a factor of 2. If I were to say f of parenthesis 2x, then our b value is greater than 1, and that would be a compress horizontally. And that's always by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. And a last little thing to note that is very important it's important to note the difference between g of x equals f parenthesis b parenthesis x minus h close close and g of x is f parenthesis bx minus h without an inner set of parentheses. The b must be factored out. It has to look like this in order for you to get the correct value of the horizontal shift. For example, if g of x was f of 2x minus 8. It looks like at first glance, okay, so a horizontal compression by 1 half, right, because we do the reciprocal, and then down 8. However, really, you're supposed to factor out that 2, like this, and then it would actually be a horizontal shift um, right 4, not 8. And you can prove that to yourself in the calculator if you want to. We could do... Um, Let's say f of x, oh, where's the pen, sorry. f of x was x squared. So putting a 2x minus 8 inside parentheses would be parentheses 2x minus 8 all squared. And if we graphed that, 
you would see that that parabola, this parabola right here, only shifts to the right one, two, three, four units. And that's because that's the same thing as saying parenthesis two, parenthesis x minus four squared. So what I'm trying to say is make sure that it's in this form, that the b is factored out before you go any further. Because we're going to throw some at you where it is factored and some at you where it's not factored. And I need you guys to be able to know what it's supposed to look like. And so if it's not already factored, you've got to get it there first. All right, and then the easiest of the transformations is the reflections. If I have a negative out in front of my function, if the a is negative, that's going to reflect the graph across the x-axis. So all of my, my positive 2 now becomes negative 2, or vice versa here. My positive 2 becomes negative 2. My negative 2 becomes positive 2. So the whole thing flips over. But don't tell me it flips over. Tell me it reflects across the x-axis. Now if b is negative, if it's negative inside the function, so only the x is negative, not the whole function, that's going to reflect the graph across the y-axis. So positive, um, x, yeah, positive 1 becomes negative 1. Positive 3 here becomes negative 3. Positive 5 here becomes negative 5. So it reflects it across the y-axis. So you can't say flip here either because I don't know which one you're talking about. You've got to say reflect across the y-axis. Now the last thing that we're going to do in this video is modeling. And we're going to use a quadratic as an example. So here's a word problem for you. We've got the netting of an empty hammock. It hangs between its supports along a curve that can be modeled by a parabola. So if you see in the background, there's a hammock on supports. Here's the hammock right here. We're going to use a parabola to model the shape of it. Parabolas are quadratic. We'll get more into quadratics in another chapter, but right now you, you know that x squared makes a parabola. Um, in here, the unit of measurement for both axes is feet. So they've put a, a coordinate plane right there. They just chose to put it there. And so this point is at 3, 3. And this point is at negative 2, 4. And this point is at 8, 4. And it says, find a quadratic function that models the hammock's netting and state the function's domain. So as I said, the parent function of, is going to be x squared, f of x equals x squared. And then we have to find the parameters that change it, because y equals x squared is 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and it's a parabola like that. But that's not what this is. It's been stretched out, we can tell, um, or compressed vertically, stretched horizontally, one or the other, or, or both, really. Um, and it's been moved to the right and up. So let's figure out what these parameters are. All right, so if I took my function f of x is x squared, then f of x with our changes, we could have a positive or a negative. We could have an a value, and then positive or negative and a b value, and then we can have a horizontal shift, and then we have the squared, because that's the only thing that's in the function. And then after the function, we could have plus k. And then here it says, because it is squared, the b value can be combined with a and left out. And that's like I was saying, well, is that horizontally stretched or is it vertically compressed? It's either one or both. Our a and our b can be um, in either place because it's a squared model. So we're just going to leave the b, um, the b out of this altogether. We're, just, we're going to call it an a value. So that cleans it up a little bit. We took out the b. And then I know that my parent function has a vertex at 0, 0. So anytime I shift a parabola, I know that wherever my vertex goes, um, we have a horizontal shift h and a vertical shift k. I can look here and go, well, my, it, my original vertex would have been there. I went to the right 3, and I went up 3. So that tells us the values of h and k. Um, we went right 3, so we know we're going to do x minus 3. And we went up 3, so then after the function we'll have a plus 3. So now the trick to finding the actual equation of this is to take our parent, take what we know it looks like with letters, and then we're going to take another point, and you can use either this one or this one. It does not matter at all. 
um, I'm going to go with this one because that has negative and negatives are ugly, right? Um, and we're going to plug that in as x and y. And remember, f of x is the same thing as our y. So we're going to have um, our y value is 4. And then I don't know what a is yet, so I'm going to leave it as the letter a. And then that's my x right there, 8 minus, and then we already figured out h and k. h was 3 and k was 3, so 8 minus 3 squared plus 3. So now the only variable left in this problem is a. So you, what you do is you figure out h and k, you figure out one other point on the parabola and put it in for x and y, and then that just leaves you with a to solve for, and that's easy to do. So here I have it typed out so you can actually read it. Um, when we when we take away, uh, yeah, we just take away 3, we, we square the 8 minus 3 is 5, squared is 25, and then uh, divide by 25, and here we go, a is 1 over 25. So then when you know a, you just go back, rewrite the equation, f of x equals, we have our a here, oh, I didn't mean to move that, sorry, there we go, I was looking for this, we have our a here, x minus h here, squared, and then plus k here. And then we have to think, this is a real world situation, this is a word problem, so you've got to think logically. Um, this is a hammock, and so we have to restrict the domain. The endpoints of the hammock are here and here. So the domain, and this confused me before because I was like, no they're not, they're over there and over there. I guess they're assuming that this is rope, okay? so. This is the hammock part right here and right here. So the domain of the hammock itself, only the hammock, would be from this x value, negative 2, to this va x value, 8. And so we would say um, in set notation, x given negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 8. Or in, um, in interval notation, which I prefer, hard bracket, negative 2, comma, hard bracket, 8. And then, of course, restricting your domain automatically restricts your range. So you don't have to talk about the range when you're doing your real-world problem. You just restrict your domain, and then it's all taken care of. And because this was another long, boring video, I'm going to leave you with a joke so you can end on a laugh. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night.